uh, your word. Uh, thank you that the entrance of it gives light and understanding. And uh, we pray that you would continue to illuminate our hearts and our minds on this topic of the Holy Spirit and walking in the Spirit, Lord, and helping us not only to be hearers but to be doers. And, Lord, to uh, 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 utilize the uh, principles that we're learning uh, in our own personal lives in a greater way, Lord. Uh, teach us by your Spirit. Help us, Holy Spirit. We need your help. Uh, we not only need to uh, clearly understand it, but, Lord, we, we want this to be a, a daily thing that we are aware of. Uh, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We thank you for those who hear us here as those who hear us abroad. We thank you for the instruction of your word uh, with clarity and with understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit, and uh, we covered quite a bit on the Holy Spirit. And uh, we're talking from the standpoint of how to be led or walking in the Spirit. So I want you to go to our theme scripture uh, that we are coming from, which is Galatians, the book of Galatians, uh, chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5 and uh, verse 16 says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust or the cravings that uh, passionate um, uh, impulse uh, that's that's within the human being to uh, act, behave, and do things outside of and away from God. All right, and so he says, "Walk in the spirit, and you won't have to do that." Uh, you know, I know we have, I know we have a choice, right? <laughs> There is a choice in God, but this really is no choice. You understand? When you understand what the flesh brings you, then the only uh, doorway for victory is, is to walk in the Spirit. And, and what I'm teaching you doesn't happen overnight, okay? Uh, but you train yourself. You train yourself this way. Uh, it says, uh, verse uh, 17 says, because the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh you see and these two are contrary the one to the other so you can't do the things that you would so you can't do one and think you're doing the other because they're totally and diametrically opposed to each other and they are contrary to each other all right and so and so we have to understand that if you if we're going to uh if we're going to walk or live and what you find out is that God, what God is doing is actually bringing us back to the garden. Chapter 1 and chapter 2 is God's designation and his design intent for mankind. Chapter 3 is the fall, okay? And from chapter 3 to Revelations, I think it's 21, you see God done what? In the process of all of that, he restores people back to himself. And out of a people, God gets a race of people that becomes his sons, right? Is that right? Okay. And so uh, uh, look at this, Romans 8. Go to Romans 8. Romans 8. Romans 8 and verse 14. Romans 8 and verse 14. And let's look at it again. Verse 13 says, it says, For if you live after the flesh, Remember we talked about this last week, that some people equate your body to the flesh. And your body is not your flesh, right? How many of y'all remember what I said your flesh was? Anybody remember? What did I say your flesh was? Go ahead, you can talk to me. What did I say your flesh was? Anybody want to take a stab at it? Okay, so it's a, it's a system of thought, Right? It is a system of thought that, that is entirely independent of itself from God. It's really what it is. It is a system of thought. And you see that system, right? You see that system in Genesis 3 where the devil told Eve, God said this, but don't believe what he said. You can do this. 
you can be God of yourself, right? So it's a system of thought. So he says, for if you live after what? Your flesh, you see, fulfilling those appetites and desires, you will die. But if you through the Spirit mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are what? They are the sons of God, the weos, right? The matured sons of God. And then he says here, he says, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. So it is the, it is the if you want to say it is the first thing, just like when mama gave you birth, and they spanked you on the booty, and you say, ah! You start crying, and as soon as you can talk, one of the first things you say is mama, right? And so he said, the writer says that one of the first things that happens to us is that cry that comes from our hearts to God the Father that says Abba, Abba, Abba or Daddy, right? Verse 15 says, for you have not received the spirit of bondage against to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby you cry, Abba, Father. Verse 16 says, so the Spirit itself, better rendition is the Spirit Himself. The Spirit Himself, the Spirit Himself bears witness with what? Our spirits that what? That we are the children of God. Now you must not forget that, that one of the first ways that the Holy Spirit uh, uh, leads you and I, one of the first ways that you and I walk in fellowship the way the Holy Spirit communicates to us is to our spirits, right? Because He lives in our spirits. You with me? So notice the Holy Spirit is the only capable one of controlling your life, not a man. He's the only one capable of controlling you. He has taken residence in you, with the, which is within your spirit. So... Uh, I remember, as, as when, especially when we talk about this, when I contemplate, when I was in New York City, and if you remember, I talked about that, when, when the Lord put us on the streets in New York, and we preached down there for six months straight, 12-hour shifts, right? And we preached full time. And it came to a point where I did not know what else to do. And it got cold. We were doing this for about six months. And I didn't know which direction to take. And as I laid on my bed and began to pray in the Holy Ghost, asking God, God, what do you want me to do? I didn't know whether to go right, left, up, down. Didn't know what to do, right? And I told you how the Holy Spirit spoke to my spirit and told me the direction that I needed to take. That's the only one that's supposed to direct us. That's the difference today with the... Christians, or not Christians, but the church in the Old Testament. And we have to understand that today. The Holy Spirit is the only one that has the right to govern and control your life. You don't even have the right <laughs> to control your own life. Because when we control our own lives, we get ourselves in all sorts of mess, right? And so we have to listen to the Holy Spirit. He's the one that knows the mind of God for you. He's the one that knows the plan of God for you. And he's the one that knows how to lead you. So what we must understand is that the people in the Old Testament did not have the Holy Spirit residing in them. What you call the laity, or if you want to use that, the congregation, they didn't have the Holy Spirit abiding in them as we do today. So for them to hear from God, they had to seek out what you call a prophet, right? Uh, uh, the priest was anointed to do what? To offer up uh, 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 the, the, the offering for the sins of the people once a, once a year. And the king was anointed in order what? To lead the people or to govern the people. And then you had judges that God raised up. But by far, the people did not have the spirit indwelling them. And remember that even with that, the spirit came upon them, uh, a crystal, to empower them to do something. And then he would leave. Okay. He, he did not abide in them. You follow me? He did not abide in them. So in this, in this case or in this sense, it is totally different than the Old Testament. 
So when, I'm, when we're talking about the leading or the direction of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit has to govern you. The Holy Spirit knows what your life is supposed to be like. He knows exactly where you are supposed to be and where you are supposed to go. So he governs that. So you say, well, what about the pastor and the prophet and, and all these others that God put there? They are put there in order to, to, to teach you and to instruct you by the Spirit so that you can grow up and become matured in the Lord so you can hear God for yourself. That never, that never negates them. It never negates their need in your life. But boy, when you talk about governing your life and talking about what you ought to do or not do, no man can tell you that but God. All right? Especially if you want to be right. No one can uh, uh, effectively direct that but the Lord. Now, the Lord can speak through his servants. And the Lord will do those things. And I'm going to show you when the Lord does that, how you know these things, right? Uh, the prophet would say the word of the, and you read many times in the scriptures where the Bible said the word of the Lord came to me. Well, I think that's kind of how it came to me when I heard it, because it sounded like it was from out, it sounded like it was audibly outside, but it was actually inside me. The Lord spoke to my spirit, and your spirit is who communicates with your mind. All right, your spirit is who communicates the things of God to your mind so sometimes God can speak to you and it sounds audibly it sounds so audibly but he speaks to you on the inside he speaks to you on the inside secondly a new testament in the new testament you will know and see things a, a, a prophet can know and th see things supernaturally in the new testament and he does do that okay a prophet will see and know things supernaturally. However, you have to understand that the status of the prophet in the New Testament is entirely different than the status of the prophet in the Old Testament. People get in trouble in the New Testament, okay, when a prophet begins to control your life. Okay? That's so why folks in church get into trouble, get into a lot of trouble. A prophet gets in there and start telling you what to do, and the Lord never told you, or you have no witness in your spirit about it. Do you follow me? So the, the, the prophet's office is of a necessity today as it was back then, okay? But he operates a bit different than the Old Testament prophet, okay? And we need to understand that, okay? We need to understand that. So a new test in the New Testament, you will know and see th that the prophet uh, uh, operates supernaturally just like the Old Testament prophet. However, his status or his modus of operating is a bit different. It's not the same like the old. He said, well, how is that? Well, in the New Testament, Christians do not need to seek guidance through a prophet. Right? Is that right? Y'all with me? Amen. That, they don't need to seek guidance to a prophet. In the Old Testament, they will go to the prophet. Why? Why would they go to the prophet in the Old Testament? To hear from God, to hear from God right? They did not have the Spirit, right? The prophet is the one that had the Spirit, and so the prophet can tell them what the mind of God is and what God is saying to them. But in the New Testament, is a bit different because now, not only can the prophet give you the mind of God, but now you have this, that same Spirit in you. You see that? That same Spirit now resides on the inside of you. So you don't seek guidance through the prophet. You seek guidance from who? From God, right? The Holy Spirit is the one God. So if you want to know what to do, you seek God about that. You seek the Lord about that. And the Lord Jesus will put in your heart or in your spirit what you ought to do. Now, a prophet can come and prophesy to you. And when he does, then what he's going to do is more than likely confirm what you are already feeling. You follow me? Are you all with me? You say, well, what if a prophet tells me something that I don't know nothing about, I'm not thinking about, what must I do then? Well, that's when you take it 
and you put it on your shelf. And you, say, and you take that word that he gives you and you take it to the Lord. Say, God, is this for me? And if it's for me, what do you want me to do? That's where the Holy Spirit will guide you. All right? That, that, these are, I'm telling you, I know, maybe this sounds elementary to you, but you will be surprised. Okay? You, you have to be careful. You have to be careful where you and I put individuals and what we allow them to do. The Holy Spirit is the only one that knows your life and knows where you ought to be. All right? So you don't seek guidance through a prophet. It is possible that God can use a prophet to give you guidance. Okay? So I'm not saying he does it. All right? But the believer doesn't go to him in order to know the mind of God. Not today. Today, you see God for yourself because God is living on the inside of you and you got a Bible. Okay? <laughs> so the New Testament prophet, what he does is he confirms. He confirms. The New Testament prophet confirms within your spirit what God is already saying to you. And I'm going to show you how it works in the Bible. Okay? I'm going to show you how this works in the Bible. Because this is how you're supposed to live. I know I sound redundant. But maybe one day you'll, you'll be thanking me that I did it so redundantly. Okay? This is how we're supposed to live now. The, the voice of your body is your feelings. All right? But we listen to that a whole lot. And what God wants you and I to learn how to listen to is the spirit on the inside of us or your own spirit by the Holy Spirit. The voice of your spirit. How many of y'all remember who I said the voice of your spirit is? What's the voice of your spirit? Your con? Your conscience. It's the voice of your spirit. Just like you have a natural voice, you have a voice. Your spirit has a voice. And he speaks to you. Okay? That's called, that's called your conscience. I'm going to show you how this, this whole deal of, of, of the witness of the spirit works in our life. And we're going to look at the word of God, okay? Uh, I want you to go first to Acts 21. Acts 21. Now, you know, as I, as I grew and, and, and people taught me these things and I learned these things, what I realized as you grow is the only way to learn it real good is to do it. And I'm pretty sure what I'm saying, all of us have experienced it to some degree or another. Okay? Uh, Acts 21. But this is how we walk. The Bible said walk in the spirit, right? Or in other words, walk in fellowship with, listen to the Holy Spirit. Well, if I'm going to listen to him, I need to understand how he speaks to me. Okay? Uh, Acts 21, you there? Okay, look at, uh, look, I'm going to read from verse 8, uh, Acts 21, and I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'm going to read from verse 8 to verse 14, Okay? And that, that way we can get the gist of it. And the next day, we that were of Paul's company departed and came into Caesarea, and we entered into the house of Philip the evangelist, which was of the seven and abode with them. All right? And the same man had four daughters, that's Philip, four daughters that were virgins, which they prophesied. Now, I want you, this, I'm not going to go down this rabbit hole. But I want you to see, they prophesied, but they were not prophets. Okay? Verse 10, as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain what? Uh -huh. So they had prophets in their day. A certain prophet came down, and his name was? Agabus, right? Verse 11. Now, look what he said now. Verse 11 said, and when he was come down unto us, he took his girdle. 
All right? He, he took Paul's girdle, and he bowed his hands and feet and said, Thus said the Holy Ghost. So he's going to tell you what God is saying. He said, So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owns this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, both we and they of that place besought. That's a nice word to say. They begged Paul, do not go to Jerusalem. You see that? They begged him, don't go, man. Stay here with us. Uh, look at Paul's answer. Then Paul answered and said, uh, what do you mean to weep and to break my heart? He said, uh, I am not only ready to be bound. I'm not, uh, for I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And when he would not be persuaded, we see saying the will of the Lord be done. Now, now you, you, you got to examine this. You got to examine this because what the prophet here did not do is tell the man what to do. So you, you, have to, you can't read too fast because you'll miss these lessons, okay? The prophet didn't tell the man what to do. He told the man what's going to happen, right? What's going to happen to the person that owns this girdle? That's what he told the prophet, okay? The people are the ones that say, don't go because we don't want you to be bound, Paul. We want to keep you around. We don't want these bad things to happen to you. But listen to this. Paul had to obey the Lord. So now, how do you know that he was following what God had put in his spirit? Well, there is scripture for that. Look at, go back over to Acts chapter 9. Go to Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Ty Cook, what's up, man? Randall, God bless you all. Look at this. Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9 and verse 21. No, I'm sorry, verse 15. It says here, this is when Paul was thrown off his horse, right? Uh, 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 went to Damascus, right? He was blind for three days. Now look what happened. God spoke to Ananias and says, go down to a certain house. There's a man in there called Paul. He know who he was. He said, I want you to pray for him. He saw you in a vision. You laying your hands on him, praying for him, receiving his sight. I want you to go and do exactly what he saw. Verse 15, but the Lord said unto him, go your way, for he's a chosen vessel. Jesus talking to Ananias, unto me. To bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he was what? He must suffer for my name's sake. Now remember that. Okay? God said, I'm going to show him the things that he must suffer. Now flip back over to chapter 19. Go to chapter 19 of Acts. And I want you to look at verse 18. Verse 18, you there? Chapter 19 and verse 18. And it says, chapter 19 and verse 18. I'm talking about the inward witness. It says, it says, uh, and many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds Many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. Verse 20, so mightily grew the word of God and what? And prevailed, right? Verse 21, after these things were ended, Paul purposed where? In his spirit. Who lives in his spirit? The Holy Spirit. Okay, so Paul, Paul purposing in his spirit is indicative that the Holy Spirit was communicating to the man. Okay, y'all with me? The Holy Spirit was communicating to Paul 
what he needed to do. It said he purposed in, in his spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem. Watch this now. Watch this now. This is where the prophet told him, right? The person who goes to Jerusalem is going to be what? It's going to be bound. But Paul already knew in his spirit, he purposed in his spirit, when he passes through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem saying, after I have been there, I must go to where? I must go to Rome. Now I want to show you that these guys just wasn't doing things just off the top of their head. Well, what does Paul mean that he must go to Rome? I'm so glad you asked the question. Because... <laughs> <laughs> because I want you to flip over to chapter 23. Flip over to chapter 23. Acts chapter 23. And look, now, now we're going to look at verse 11. Look, it said, it said, And the night following, the Lord stood by him. Who stood by him? The Lord stood by him. How do I know that Paul going to, to, to Jerusalem and then making up his mind or in his spirit, he had already purposed to go to Rome. How do I know it was the will of God? Well, look at the Bible. It says, verse 11, And the night following, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, who? For as thou hast testified of me, where? So must you bear witness, where? In Rome. You see that. The, 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 the prophet did not, did not try to control Paul's life and tell him what the will of God is. The prophet simply signified what is going to happen to the person who owns this girdle. What is going to happen in their life. But by no means he was trying to control the life of Paul. Are you following me? Because Paul already knew what God's purpose was for him. God had already testified and told him, I want you to go to Rome. It was God's divine purpose, and you ought to study it sometime. It was God's divine purpose for Paul to go to Rome because Rome was the Mecca in that day. Rome was the hub. It was the, it was the place from which you can reach, if I could say that, the known world. It was the perfect place where the gospel can go from there and go all over the world. Are you following me? And so God already had in mind that Paul was to go to Rome, but Paul was not going to get there without any trouble. And so you see, if you allow just trouble or difficulty to stop you, you'll never, you will never fulfill the plan of God. If you allow trouble and difficulty to dictate to you whether you're in the will of God, you got problems. Are you following me? Because none of us, look at me, look at me. None of us, that includes me, we do not like trouble. We don't like pressure. We don't like pain. Are you listening to me? Every, all of us want everybody to like us. You don't want to start doing the will of God and all of a sudden people don't like you for no reason. None of us asks for that. But there's a devil in the world. You're not going to just start something for God and the devil looks at you and claps. And the demons clap and say, isn't that nice Velma Peterkin? You over here and you're going to start this? The devil is not going to do that. Are you listening to me? He's not going to sit idly by while you are trying to get close to God and not try to inflict you or cause difficulty and problems in order to stop you. The devil is not going to do that. And if you, watch this now, if you, if you uh, 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 make the decision of whether it's the will of God based upon whether you're having conflict or not, you will always miss the will of God. God. See? You can't, you can't take those things. <clears throat> you can't take those things to decide. You can't take those things to decide what the will of God is. All right? Now there's a question, and I'm going to answer it in a little bit, but it said, What was the purpose of the prophet sharing that info since Saul already knew what it 
Saul already knew. What is a test of obedience? Well, uh, I said I'll, uh, I'll answer it later, but it's right in step with what we're saying. Well, what, what, what the prophet was doing was, was preparing Paul. Just because Paul knew he had to go to Rome, he don't know what all is going to face him. The Bible says that save that the Holy Spirit witnessed to me that bonds and afflictions abide me. That means everywhere I go, trouble is coming. But that doesn't mean Paul was like you and me. That doesn't mean he knew everything. It doesn't mean that he knew all that was going to happen. So even though he's going to Jerusalem, the prophet said, hey, the person that owns this girdle, this is what's going to happen to him. So think about it with me. If you're going down the block and you knew that certain challenges are going to happen, what would you do? And don't tell me you're not going to go. Don't tell me you're not going to go. All right, But what you're going to do, if you had to go, mother, is you're going to prepare yourself. You see what I'm saying? Now, we can gather by Paul's uh, uh, response after the prophet told him is that the dude was pretty tall inwardly. And, and, and he had made up his mind. But the prophet nonetheless signified, not only to him, but to those who were there, this is what's going to happen. And that's what you will find a prophet, a real prophet. A real, I'm talking about real prophets, okay? I'm not just talking about folks that prophesy. Come <laughs> Because that don't make you a prophet. All right? That don't make you a prophet. Uh, 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 supposing you, you all had a, uh, uh, a pain in your abdomen. Uh, uh, what, they, what they get in there again? Um, your appendix, right? And you come to church, and I said, mm, I know what you got. You got you got a problem in your appendix. I'm going to operate on you. Just come back in the morning, and I'll operate on you. Are you going to show up? No, you're not going to show up. You're going to be like, Pastor, I love you, man. I really love you, man, but <clears throat> I'm not coming. If you're not teaching the Bible, I'm not coming. Why? Not a doctor. Not a doctor. You're not I'm not trained. I don't have the know-how, the knowledge, the understanding. I don't possess the tools. I don't have the tools of the office to give you the comfort and assurance that I can perform surgery. Now, you pretty much know I got the tools for what I'm doing. All right? I got the tools, I've got the experience, and I have the paperwork and everything to show you I have the tools for what I'm doing. But to go operate on you, I don't have. Well, it's the same thing with a prophet. If a person is a prophet, he has to have the tools of the office. Are you listening to me? Are you all hearing me? How would you like a plumber come to your house because you got plumbing problems, and when the plumber comes to your house, he say, hey, look, do you have a screwdriver? Do you have a hammer? Or do you have a, 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 a ratchet? You know, I would be looking at him like he's crazy. I would be like, man, you need to get out of my house because if you don't have the tools, how are you going to help me? <coughs> are you following me? Well, it's the same thing with a prophet. It's the same thing with the evangelist. Same thing with the pastor. Same thing with the teacher. Same thing with the pastor. All these offices, all these offices, you are supposed to have the tools, and the tools is what tells you that that man is who he says he is. Are you following me? Okay, and so just because they prophesy don't necessarily mean they are prophets, right? So the, the prophet Agabus prepared Paul for what was coming. And see, just because Paul was an apostle doesn't mean he don't need the prophet. Just because God's taken him and showed him things doesn't mean he don't need a pastor or he doesn't... We are interdependent. If you read the letters of Paul, Paul would say things like, send Timothy to me. Send John Mark to me. Send so-and-so to me. I need them. He's not God. He wasn't God. 
He needed, he, he needed the other members of the body to lift the spirit, to encourage him, and to help him. All of us are like that. So it doesn't matter how great of a preacher or great of whatever you are. You'll always need the rest of the body. God is not going to dump so much in you that you don't need nobody else. Because then you wouldn't be able to get through the door. Your head would be so big. And that's why God gave Paul a thorn in the flesh. A messenger of Satan to buffet him. Because this man went to heaven, God showed him all this stuff. And to keep him grounded on the earth so that he doesn't get a big head. And that's what 2 Corinthians 12 said. Alright? So that he, he's not exalted above measure. The messenger of Satan was given. And the messenger of Satan kept Paul grounded. That means he kept Paul understanding. You're a man. And you need God. And you need the rest of the body. Regardless to what you've seen. You're still a man. Are you following me? Is this good or what? I, I, can, I tell you what, I can get saved all over again. Right okay? All right? So, 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 again, I wanted to show you how this, uh, uh, this uh, witness, it's a witness that comes into your spirit. Sometimes it's not even words. It's not even words. It's, it's like a knowing, like a something that you know. It is information that comes to your spirit by the Holy Spirit that is transmitted to your mind, but is a knowing by your spirit. So have you ever been there? Those of you out there, have you ever been there where you, you attempted to do something and you just, you don't know why. You just, I just don't feel good about this. I, I, I just don't, I just don't, we can say this, I don't have a peace about it. I, something ain't right about it. You don't know exactly what, you, you got to listen to that. That's, that's your spirit communicating something to your mind. And although you don't know the whole scope of what's going on, you have to listen to your witness or that inner witness. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? It's called an inner wicked. This is how you and I walk with the Spirit. This is how you walk with the Holy Spirit. The only reason why we may not be as sensitive to it as we're supposed to, because we're more conscious of our physical man than we are of the Spirit man. That's why you have the Bible. That's why you're to walk with God. That's why God put all this stuff in it so that you and I could be can learn how to become conscious. Let me throw this out to you. Man, I got to quit. Let me throw this out to you. Uh, Kenneth Hagin talks about a man that uh, he would go to his house. And the, the man was an elder gentleman. And, and, and he would have boiling coffee on his stove. And he said that man would take that coffee and pour it into the cup. And when he poured into the cup, he would put the, I don't know how he did that either. He put the coffee to his mouth and he would just drink the coffee down. And Kenneth Hagin said he would watch the man and you know it, right? He's, you know, because he's feeling the pain. But the man felt no pain. And so what he realized is the man didn't get this way overnight. The man had been doing this for a long period of time to the point where the, his esophagus, the, the heat of the coffee uh, uh, seared that part of it. It seared it. And so he no longer possessed the sensitivity that you and I have. And so he could drink it hot while you couldn't. You follow me? And so it's the same thing with us with when we walk with God. What I'm talking to you about is one of the ways the Holy Spirit communicates and what you and I have to do is learn how to listen to him. Listen to that witness that goes off in you. Pay attention to it. Because if you keep overriding it, then what happens is you get dull of hearing it. Just like the guy's esophagus became dull or seared. Right? Because he kept drinking that hot thing. If you don't listen to that, that witness, give, uh, let, me, let me throw an, uh, another way that that witness happens to you. You come in and you see your sister and you say something to her joking. 
But what you said, the Holy Spirit didn't like it. But you were joking. Instantly, you get a quick, there's no word. You just feel, I shouldn't have said that. Are y'all with me? Amen. You, just, you, just, you just, no words, no, you, you, know, you just feel that something wasn't right. You should take care of it right then. Sister, I am so sorry if that offended you. Now, the sister may say, well, you didn't say anything. But the Holy Spirit in your spirit convicted you. That means for you, he's not allowing you to use those words. You see what I'm saying? If you override it and you keep overriding and you keep overriding, then after a while, that becomes dull. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? You see, see, that's how God will help you. Remember I told you last time, one brother got in his prayer closet and, and, and he would, uh, I think he, he didn't have a very high education, but he was a millionaire in the, I think it was the 30s and 40s. Millionaire. So they asked him, how, how, do you, how did you do that? He, he invested in the stock market. He said, every time I invest, I hit it right every time. I had missed it one time. He said, well, how do you do that? He said, he said when, when they tell me to, to put money in so-and-so, he said, I'll go and I'll pray and I'll talk to God about it. And I'll wait before God, sometimes three days. Now, that don't mean he stayed in his prayer closet, okay? He, he, he did what he did, but he stayed in a, in, a, in, a, in a prayerful attitude listening to the Lord. And he said that when his spirit would say yes and his mind said no, he went with his heart. And he hit it every time. When his, when, his, when his heart told him no, and his mind said yes, he went with his heart. That's exactly how you and I are supposed to live today. We're supposed to go by our heart or by our spirit. The, Kenneth Hagin said, the Lord said to him, he said, if you learn to listen to your spirit, if you learn to listen to your spirit, he said, I'll make you rich. See? If you learn to listen to your spirit, you say, well, would God make you rich? Yes, he would. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. The Bible said that we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that he became poor for us, that throughout, that through his poverty, we might become rich, or that we might have an abundance of Supply. Look at the life of Jesus. Jesus obeyed the Spirit, and what happened? He made him rich too. Jesus didn't go around begging for nothing. <laughs> oh, are, you, are, you, are you all with me? This is what I'm talking I, I hope this helps you, because this show helped me. Okay? This is what the Holy Spirit means when he talks about you uh, uh, listening to your spirit. See, God will guide you. God will guide you. Now, now someone asks, how, how is what I'm saying to you differ from feelings? Well, it all depends. Because sometimes we say, I feel this. And what we're saying is, I sense it in my heart. So you have to differentiate what you mean. Okay? What do you mean you feel? Are you telling me that you sense this in your spirit or you're feeling it in your spirit? That's entirely different than you saying it, I feel it physically. Now, what happens to us many times is we get up. Watch me now. You get up and you, you got up on the wrong side of the bed. Are y'all with me? And so your whole day is messed up because you got up and you didn't feel right. That's a physical feeling. I didn't feel like talking to folks. Or you may have got up and you just felt depressed. You ever been like that? Sometimes I get up, I'm not sick. I just don't, I just don't, you know, I feel like, honey, don't talk to me. You know, that's how I feel. No, don't nobody talk to me. Leave me alone. You ever feel like that? And, and you know what? If you don't deal with it before you get out, you go to Walmart with a frown on your face and mad at the, mad at the whole world. Are you following me? 
And so you have to deal with that stuff. And so sometimes all you need to do is just put on some worship music and worship or get in your prayer room and for about 15 minutes pray in tongues and get that stuff to lift off you and you good to go. You see what I'm saying? But you got a choice. I have a choice. I can get up and, and, and live that day by my feelings and I'm mad at the whole world. Oh, I can choose to activate within my spirit and change how I'm feeling physically and just walk in the love of God. That's your decision. See? But that's what's there. Okay? That's what's there and that's what's available. That's how that differs. Okay? And that's how those feelings differ. Uh, in Acts, oh God, in Acts, uh, Acts uh, uh, 27, verse 20 and 25, it says, And when neither sun nor stars, Acts 27, I'm going to read, but you go there, Acts 27, verse 20 and 25, it says, And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was taken away. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sir... You should have hearkened unto me and not loose from Crete and, and, and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I'm exhorting you. This is Paul in the midst of the ocean. A mighty tempest, a mighty hurricane called Eurachlodon is out there. It's, 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 it's threatening their very lives. Look what he said. He said, now I exhort you to be of good cheer for there, for there shall no loss... There shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, for thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sir, be of good cheer, for I believe God it shall be what? It shall be told even as it was told to me. Okay? So notice this. Uh, let me just read this, this verse, and we're going to close here. Uh, Romans 8, verse 16, it says, For the Spirit in itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Remember what I told you. If the most important thing in life for you and I, I happens when you and I receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, and the, the ability or the information, the confidence of knowing that Christ is your Savior, that you have passed from death into life, and that your eternal destiny has been secured, the, 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 the prominent way that you come to know this, or the way God lets you know that, is by the Holy Spirit bearing witness with your spirit, then that tells you and I that the prominent way that God leads you in life is by that inward witness. The prominent way that God lets you know. You're, you, you're outside, you're on the job, you have to make decisions. If you, if you take the time to develop your spirit, okay, if you take the time to develop your spirit, you can know what decisions to make. You will know when the peace of God is not there for you to do it. You will know when to, uh, what decision you ought to make. And if you don't know what to do, then don't do nothing. You'll be amazed at what the Holy Spirit will guide you in if you pay attention to Him. He'll guide you in the little itsy bitsy things. As a matter of fact, if he can't guide you in the little bits and bits of things, you won't believe him to guide you in the hard things. But what you know, if you all don't get nothing I'm saying, if you don't, if you don't hear nothing else I'm telling you, I, I simply want you to understand that the life that you and I have available to us far exceeds what we have been living. And if God gave us the Holy Spirit as a down payment, the Bible calls it the earnest 
That's a down payment. If the God gave us the Holy Spirit as a down payment, He did not give them for you to use Him. He gave them to you so He can use you. He knows the mind of God, folks. He knows what you need. The Holy Spirit knows what you need. It's out of your belly that the joy of the Lord comes. It doesn't come out of uh, out here. The joy of the Lord is not dependent on circumstances. It comes out of your belly. So when things ain't going right, you can muster it up. Paul said, I, I pray in tongues more than all of you. You hear me? Because the, 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 the praying in tongues helps you. My goodness. Look at this, 1 John 5 and verse 10. 1 John 5 and verse 10. Look at that. 1 John 5 and verse 10. It says, he that, I want you to, I'm, I'm going to go slow with this scripture. It says, he that believeth on the Son of God, watch this now, hath, past tense, hath the witness in himself. The person who believes on the Son of God, the Bible said the witness is in you. And he that believeth not God hath made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave his Son. Who's the witness? Who's the witness? Who is the witness? The Holy Spirit is the witness, right? Acts 5.32 Peter said, we are witnesses, and so also is the Holy Spirit, whom God gives to all them who obey him. So the witness is the Spirit. He is on the inside of you. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in him. And the witness in you, the witness in you, that was, I'm sorry, that was 1 John 5 and verse 10. The witness in you will save you a whole lot of heartache. The witness in you will save you a whole lot of time. The witness in you will help you. All right? Okay. Uh, someone said, some, uh, I think as Lorraine said, explain the tools. I apologize because I meant to read that and I did not read it. What are the tools of a prophet? Let me show you, for instance. For instance, a prophet tools are the gift of revelation. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, and the gift of prophecy. All right? Those are the tools of the prophet, plus he's called to be a preacher. You say, what do you mean, preacher? Well, let me explain it this year. The word of wisdom lets you know the future. Right? The word of knowledge gives you the present or the past. Discerning of spirits help you to discern demons Angels or a human spirit. So you see, a prophet can't tell you the future, Steph, unless he can see by the mind of God. He can tell you the future. You see that? Unless he has the mind of God, he can't tell you the present or the past. And he can't read people's lives without the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the mind of God. Those are the tools of a prophet. Okay? And when we get into, you know, whenever we get into the fivefold ministry gift, then we can talk about each office, and you can see all the tools that they all have. So, you know, anybody can say I'm an evangelist, but you got to have the gifts of an evangelist. Anybody can say I'm a pastor, I'm a this, I'm a that, I'm the other, but do you have the tools? Are you listening to me? God can call you to that, but if God puts you in there, you've got to possess the tools to do the job. Okay? If you don't if you don't have the tools, then you can't do the job. Okay? Okay, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. We're gonna we're gonna pick up on next week. Okay, we're talking about walking in the spirit. Okay, being led by the Holy Spirit. And we just talked about the witness of God in our hearts. And the, you know, the book of Acts is filled with these things. And you can see how the, the early church, how they functioned in it. Okay? You can see how they functioned in it. And, and, and boy, today, boy, if, if nothing else, we, we need the Holy Spirit. 
And we need these things in our lives. And we need to develop and mature in the things of God to where we learn and know how to function in these things. Amen? And I, I hope this, this has really blessed you tonight. Father, I just give you thanks and praise tonight uh, for your word. I thank you for the mighty power and presence of the Holy Spirit. I know I've given, uh, given us quite a bit tonight. And Lord, even those who are listening to us over uh, uh, Facebook, Lord, that you would uh, uh, move them to, to study even further and to even take the scriptures that, that we have, have laid out, Lord, and, and they, could, uh, uh, they can go even further than I'm able to tonight, Lord God, and, and see how these things work because you, you have the examples in the scriptures. And I pray in Jesus' name that you would uh, uh, just help the people, help us here as well as abroad, Lord. Cause your wonderful spirit to move upon us and to uh, 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 help us not only to see and to hear but to understand. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you uh, would take us even further in the things of God and you would you would help us, Lord. Help us. Help us, God, in Jesus' name. Help us. Help us to drink of you. Help us to, to, to take the time to, to uh, uh, take in this life that you have in us. That will benefit us in our everyday life. And all that we uh, have to do daily, Lord. Stimulate our hearts. Set our spirits on fire. Reignite us passionately for you, Lord Jesus, and for the things of the kingdom. We thank you. And don't let, as the word says, the, don't let the things that are happening cause the love or our love to grow cold. But let us burn even more so, Lord, for you. In Jesus' name, I thank you and I praise you tonight. Amen. Look, we love you. God bless you. We'll see you on next Thursday night, okay? We love you in the Lord. Uh, I know we uh, touched on some things. If you have any other questions, send us your questions and uh, I'll make sure that we're able to touch on that on next week, okay? If you'd like to write us, you can write us at uh, RodolfoPeterkin.org, our website. Go there and, and uh, just let us know how God has blessed you or helped you or if there's something that we need to help you or pray with you for that we'll be more than happy to do that, okay? All right, we'll see you all next week, Thursday at 7 o'clock. God bless you. That's Eastern time. We love you in the Lord. Bye-bye.